destination, mid-tier. In Kantai Collection, getting the ships to make your dream fleet is only half the picture. The other half is getting the gear to bring out their potential. A collection of amazing ships is worthless if you gear them with bargain bin parts, almost like taking the fanciest PC case and filling it with the cheapest parts around. But unlike PC parts, equipment in this game doesn't simply enter your arsenal on demand. You will have to earn them. Let's start with guns. There are plenty of guns to aim for, many are found on event ships. However, many can be gotten from outside of events. Some we have gone over already but we will go over them again here starting from small guns. The small guns can have a disproportionate impact to the efficiency of your DDs. The most common kind of 12.7 cm gun you would want to stockpile on are the B Kai 2, C Kai 2, and D Kai 2 guns. B and C guns are much easier to get. B guns you can get from remodeling ships like Yodashi to Kai 2, and C guns as we mentioned in a previous video, can be taken off from a Sashio class Kai 2S. You can also get C guns from Keijuro class Kai 2S but those remodels require B piece and action reports, so only do that to get more Kai 2 ships and not for just the guns. D guns are another matter. Most of the time you can only get them from Uagumo class Kai 2 remodels, one per ship. That means you will need to complete two Kai 2 remodels of Uagumo class ships to get a pair of D guns. The B, C, and D guns are all meant for surface combat, as you try to get more of those guns you will want to increase your AA output on DDs. This can be done by collecting 10 cm guns. The most basic 10 cm gun can be gotten easily from the very cheap Kai remodels on many starter level DDs, including your starter ship. Many of these ships can remodel at around level 10 and come with a 10 cm twin gun mount. Keep as many of these as you can. These will be the guns with the highest AA you will have access to until you get either an Akizuki or Fletcher class DD. Medium guns are far more straightforward. Mainly you will be focusing on stockpiling number 2 and number 3 guns. The 20.3 cm number 2 guns are mainly gotten from Mayukao class Kai 2S but you can also get them from other Kai 2 CAs such as Kinyagaza. The number 3 guns as we have mentioned before, are earned from remodeling Mikuma to Kai. Repeat this as many times as possible to get more. Remember that these guns also have extra bonuses during the night phase, so hoard as many as you can. Large guns are a bit more complicated. To start, you will want to stock up on the basic 41 cm twin mounts. These provide 20 firepower and will be your baseline for large guns. These also tend to be used to upgrade more powerful 41 cm guns, so stockpile as many of them as you can. The prototype 41 cm triple mount can be gotten from the Kai 2 remodels of ships such as Yamashiro and Nagato. Some quests can also give them as rewards. Other more powerful 41 cm guns such as the 41 cm triple Kai 2 or 41 cm twin Kai 2 are earned from quests that will require ISE Kai 2, Nagato Kai 2, and Mutsu Kai 2. You may want to look into getting these guns but it will likely happen much later on. Another gun worth considering is the prototype 35.6 cm triple mount. While they don't quite provide as much firepower as the 41 cm guns, these are rather easy to get from quests related to the Kongu class ships, so you can work towards these guns while leveling the Kongus to Kai 2 and stocking on 41 cm twins off of their remodels. 46 cm guns are also worth considering. Currently the only way to get the standard 46 cm triple mount is either from development or as the stock equipment on either Yamato or Musashi. You may want to carefully consider how you will want to get these guns under the context of your current resource stockpiles. Next are radars. They come with many Kai remodels so having a stockpile of the basic type 22, 21 and 13 radars will happen without you noticing. The real issue is trying to stockpile on more advanced radars. 
The more advanced Type 22 Chi 4 radar tends to come with Kajiro class Chi 2 remodels, and a few select quests. These radars provide more accuracy and a tiny bit of ASW compared to the normal Type 22. Other advanced radars include Type 32, 33, and 42 radars. These are all buildable radars that you may want to try developing when you have the resources to spare, especially the 32 and 33. The large surface radar type 32 and the small surface radar type 33 provide more loss and accuracy than the type 22 which you may want to have equipped on your CAs and DDs. We also have to cover a newer third type of radar, the hybrid radar. These radars count as both air and surface radars in one single radar. Currently they include the SG initial model, the GFCS Mark 37, the FUMO 25, the 15M duplex rangefinder and Type 21 Chi 2, the SK and SK and SG radars, and Type 21 Chi. The SG initial model radar can be gotten from the Chi remodels of Fletcher class DDs. The GFCS Mark 37 tends to be an event reward for clearing an event map at certain difficulties or as special mini event rewards. Keep an eye for either radar as these give a boost to firepower along with a range increase which you may want to use on DDs to change their firing order. The FUMO25 radar that you can get off of Prince Eugen's Kai remodel is a powerful radar that provides a bonus to firepower and great amounts of AA, accuracy, and loss. The FUMO radar is a large radar so ships smaller than CLs will not be able to equip them unlike the SG and GFCS radars which are small radars. The SK and SK and SG radars are similar to the FUMO radar and can only be gotten from events as event rewards. The SK can be upgraded into the SK and SG at the cost of a single SG radar at the very end however this is a costly upgrade and you might be better off saving the SG radar to boost the power of one of your DDs instead. The 15M duplex and Type 21 Kai 2 is stock equipment for Musashi's Kai 2 remodel. As we covered before this is a very costly remodel thus something you may want to keep in mind but not focus on chasing after early on. Finally, is the Type 21 Chi radar. This is perhaps the most common of all the hybrid radars, earnable from quests you will likely complete along the way. Though they pale in comparison to the previous radars we've just covered in terms of benefits, being a hybrid radar can come in very handy during events. Some event maps will need a certain amount of surface radars to have optimal routing. Having a radar that can add to the surface radar count while providing decent A to counter enemy air power can make such event maps easier, if only slightly so. ASW equipment, especially the most basic ones are all buildable through development. The Type 94 and 3 depth charge projectors, the Type 95 depth charge rail, the Type 93 passive and Type 3 active sonars are all the buildable ASW equipment as of right now. You will want to aim to have a stockpile of the Type 3 projector, Type 95 rail, and the Type 3 active sonar which will be the strongest you can get outside of quest and event rewards. Each provide the highest amount of ASW of their type that is buildable. Having a healthy stockpile of these three will open up the possibility of capitalizing on all the synergy bonuses and make it easier to push the ASW stat to cross the OASW thresholds. As for the event or quest only ASW equipment we start with the British sonars, the Type 124 Astic, Type 144-147 Astic, and the HF-DF and Type 144-147 Astic. The Type 124 and 144-147 are gotten from Jervis and Janus Kai remodels respectively. The HF-DF and Type 144-147 has only been an event map clear reward thus far. All of these sonars are very powerful especially the latter which provides a small loss boost on top of a massive 15 ASW boost. For depth charge weaponry we have the Type 2 rail, the Type 3 concentrated deployment projector, and the prototype 15 cm 9-tube rocket launcher. The Type 2 tends to be quest rewards which become very reachable as you get stronger DDs and CLs along with a good team of OASW ships. The other two are thus far event only, 
providing a great amount of ASW in exchange for being unapplicable to synergy bonuses. In general, during your beginning stages of this game, you will be focusing on getting gear with high ASW values to make it easier for you to reach the OASW threshold on your ships, followed by maximizing synergy bonuses where possible. However, later on you will likely be earning even more powerful ASW equipment which will allow a focus on raw ASW output instead of synergy bonuses. Next we need to talk about seaplanes, specifically seaplane fighters or SBFs. The Zero Recon seaplane can be upgraded with the help of Akashi and either one of the Chito sister. The upgrades will also consume other Zero seaplanes with the final conversion consuming three Zero Model 21 fighters. The aim is to get at least four which will be enough to mule a four, slot avenue or CAV with SBFs for situations where CVs cannot be fielded. Aim to at least get two Zero seaplane fighters from upgrading. You can get two of the more powerful Kifus from the Suzuya and Kumano quests once you get them to Kai 2. Another source for SBFs is from Pola and Zara as we have covered in event ship goals. You can review how you can farm Spanish SBFs from either of them in that video. Once you reach a stock of 4 aim for 8 and more. The more SPF muling you can take advantage of, the higher your readiness will be for no CV situations. Shells are more straightforward. Both the Type 93 AP shell and Type 3 AA shell are craftable with the same recipe. You will want to aim for around 3 or 4 AP shells which will get you set up to maximize the effectiveness of special attacks like Nagamitsu which will need 3 BBs at most. As for the Type 3 shells you will want as many as you can manage. Both the Type 93 and Type 3 shells cannibalize themselves to upgrade further. There are more powerful Type 1 AP shells and Type 3 Kai A shells that you can earn from certain quests which you will want to look into. We may cover some of these special quests in a later video. The last group of gear we need to go over are carrier based planes. Before we start, be warned that you will have to complete the Z Wikaku and Shaokeku Protopult quest line to get some of the more powerful planes. For most of your time playing you will be seeing a lot of different kinds of zeros. The Model 21 and 52 will be your mainstays. However, when possible try to craft Chidan Kai 2 and Prototype Repus. These provide 9 and 10A respectively which is as high as you will get with craftable fighters. Having a healthy stock of Repus specifically will be your first goal to improve your fighter fleet. This does not mean you can neglect your Zero Model 21S or 52S. These two are crucial for upgrading the more powerful fighters. Skilled planes will be your first step to getting the stronger fighters. In general, any plane be they fighters or bombers, a skilled version of a certain kind of plane will usually be much more powerful. The earliest one you will have access to will be the Zero Model 21 skilled. As we have covered before, these can be gotten from the Kai 2 remodel of Hiriuo and Sauriuo. They also come with skilled and named bombers we will come back to later. The Model 21 skilled is a good step up to the normal Model 21 and 52 fighters and their good range make them good planes to use in land-based fighter support during events. We will cover that at another time. Upon finishing the Protopult quest line you will gain access to a conversion quest which will turn a skilled Model 21 into a named fighter. For named fighters we have the Zero Model 53 Iwamoto Squadron, the Zero Model 52 C Iwai Flight, and the Repu 601 Air Group. The Iwamoto and Iwai fighters can be upgraded and undergo multiple conversions to become the fighters we just listed. The Iwamoto and Iwai fighter provide 12 and 11A respectively. Before undergoing any of their conversions it is recommended that you upgrade them to max as the earlier versions are much cheaper to upgrade and the upgrades carry over to the next conversion. As for the Repu 601 we have mentioned while covering Unryuo. You will need her and the Model 52 601 fighter she holds to get the Repu 601. Be warned that the Repu 601 cannot be upgraded, so we recommend that you upgrade the Model 52 601 to max first before you undergo the conversion to get the Repu 601 which inherits the upgrades. Moving on from fighters we have bombers. 
let's start with attackers as you will be using these the most. The first thing you want to do is move on to either the Tenzin or Ryosei as soon as possible. These provide 9 and 10 torpedo power respectively. Equipping all your CVs with Ryoseus exclusively is preferable. Tenzins and Ryoseus are both craftable so craft these as much as you can. However, there is another more powerful attacker that you can craft called the Ryosei Kai. Ryosei Kais are much more powerful providing 13 torpedo power. They tend to come out of crafting at a lower percentage. While trying to craft Ryosei Kais you are likely to get a fair amount of Tenzins and Ryoseus. Try to aim to get around 6 Ryosei Kais which will be enough to equip 2 CVs with 3 and a single fighter each. More is better though so try to make more while being careful not to overspend on resources. Similar to the named fighters, there are named attackers you will want to aim for. The two that are convertible through quests are the Tenzin Model 12 Tamanaga Squadron and Tenzin Model 12 Murata Squadron. These two provide 14 and 15 torpedo power respectively. Hiryoa comes with the Type 97 Tamanaga which can be upgraded. A recent update has made this attacker upgradable, we recommend you do this before converting it into the powerful Tenzin 12 version as it will not be upgradable after conversion, much like the Repu 601. Saurioa comes with a skilled Type 97 attacker which can be converted into the Type 97 Murata which can later be converted into the Tenzin 12 Murata. As you can see this is why it's important to have these two leveled and remodeled to Kai 2. Saurioa also comes with a Type 99 Igasa Squadron Dive Bomber which can be later converted into the Swissa Igasa which provides 13 bombing. It is a fairly powerful and accurate dive bomber and is useful for CVCI setups and for improving the power and accuracy for support fleets. As we covered before the Corsair Fighter Bomber is very handy to have which provides 7 AA and bombing. The AY fighter can also be further converted into a fighter bomber which is known to have shoot down resistance, making it harder to lose. However, it's not recommended to undergo that conversion until after you have a larger fleet of powerful fighters as the conversion is irreversible. There are many other powerful fighters and bombers, some that have only been seen from events, others which require a lengthy and expensive upgrade process which we don't recommend to pursue early on. We may cover these in a future video. While there is even more to gear such as land-based aircraft and anti-installation equipment, we will cover these in their own videos as their priorities can require an explanation of their specific mechanics to make any sense. Hopefully this was a good enough rundown of what pieces of gear you can aim for and how to get them. Keep in mind that updates can change the process of getting gear or the dynamic of existing gear. Sometimes new and possibly easier quests will be added which rewards you with new and powerful gear or previously hard or impossible to obtain gear. So this topic is subject to drastic changes over time and I will update it accordingly where possible. The next video will cover Akashi's mechanics which will be important to understand how upgrading works. I'll see you in the next one, bye for now.